Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In today's Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you how I was able to animate the shape dividers inside Elementor. Now, you could follow along with this tutorial if you just have the free version of Elementor, but the way that I'm adding CSS code is a little bit easier if you do have Elementor Pro. So, let's just jump right into it. So, now we're on the back end of the website. So, let me show you how this was all set up so you can easily follow along with this tutorial. So, I just have this one section right here under shape dividers. I have two different shape dividers. At the top I have pyramids and on the bottom I have this one called waves brush. And to pull all of this animation off all you need to do is add this CSS code right here. And I will have this code down in the description below. So let me go ahead and delete everything and start from scratch so you can easily follow along. So let me change these back to none and none. The first step you need to do is create the shape dividers and then, like I said, just add that CSS code. So let's go ahead and add something a little bit different. We can do um, zigzag and you can see right here, you can change how it looks. You can change how wide, how high. So let me just go ahead and do something like this. And then on the bottom, let's stick to that brush one because that one actually looks pretty good. So you can change the width right here. Um, but you just really need to be concerned about the height because we're actually going to manipulate the width of these things in CSS code. So something like that will look good. So now let's just go ahead and add that CSS code line by line so I can show you exactly what you need to do. So the first line of code I recommend is this right here. This is called the body overflow X hidden. So what that means is these animations are actually wider than the width of the browser. So if you don't have this code in here, it's going to add a scroll bar in the bottom of the browser. So if you want that, that's fine. You can not use this code, but I personally think it looks better when you don't have that uh, scroll bar in the bottom. So the next line of code, uh, there's three different ways you can um, add this code. So let me go ahead and just add this code right here. So by default, Elementor has a class on each one of these shape dividers. And let me go ahead and show you exactly what these classes are. So here are the three classes that Elementor has for these shape dividers. So this very top one is called Elementor Shape Top. The bottom one, as you figured out, is Elementor Shape Bottom. And then you can add this code right here, just called Elementor Shape. And what that's going to do is animate both of them. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to animate both of the things. But if for some reason you only want to animate the top or the bottom, you would just use one of these CSS classes. So to keep this tutorial easy, we're just going to use Elementor Shape. Now the next thing you need to do is figure out how wide you would like your um, shape divider to be. So in this tutorial, I have it at 200%. So by default, everything is always at 100%. So you could easily go in here and change this to 600%. 500%, but as you can see, it's going to start to kind of stretch that shape divider. So somewhere around a 200% is usually pretty good. Um, so that's what I was able to use to make this look nice and seamless. Now the next part is a little more advanced. So you need to be somewhat familiar with how CSS uh, animation code works. And I have this right here, and I will leave this uh, link in the description below. But this is really good documentation from uh, Mozilla. They have all the ins and outs of how CSS animation code works. So down here is where you're going to need to reference some of these codes if you want to change uh, how you animate these things. So let me just go ahead back in here. And so what you have to do is have CSS animation. Uh, the very first one is just called shape. You can call this whatever you like. Um, this is basically the name of what the whole CSS class and the keyframes are going to be. So the next step, you're going to have to reuse this. So whatever you want, make sure you're going to change this. So this value right here is how long is the duration of the animation. And you can see right here, if you click on one of these, it will give you more information. So you can go by milliseconds or seconds, but um, it's so much easier to just think in seconds, not milliseconds. So I just have this set for 10 seconds. Now this next one is where you can get a little more creative with how these things uh slide in and out or up and down whatever direction you're going to go so in this example i have it called ease in slash out and if you look under here animation timing function that's what this means right here 
So I'll play a few examples so you can see. So linear means you just go from one point to one point without any uh, easing or smooth transitions. It's just a boring animation. So you may need to use a linear animation for certain things, but in this case, I used ease in and out. So watch, you can see the ball. It will slowly f stop right here. So you can see it will kind of gradually slow down, not just a slow linear. The next one you can do if you want to have it jumpy like that. So you could do five steps, six steps, whatever it may be. And then this one is where you can get really creative. This is a cubic uh, bezier. So this is a little more advanced, but you can see it jumps back. You can really manipulate how it looks. Um, you can go backwards, forward real quick with just these values right here. I'm not going to cover that in this, in this tutorial. This can get pretty complicated, but in most use cases, you probably just want to stick with ease in and out, or you can even just use this one called ease. Uh, they work pretty similar. So as you can see here, this is what I added right here. Okay, and the last thing you need to set is the iteration. So if you go here um, to animation, iteration count, this is actually going to be how many times is this uh, animation going to play? So you can do 0, 2, 1.5. You could do all different types of uh, scenarios. So if you want a loop, you would just type in this word right here, infinite. So it will always just keep looping. So in this, in this case, that's exactly what I wanted. So just to recap, we have our custom name here. How long is the animation going to last? How is it going to fade in and out or ease in and out? And then the last one is how many times is it going to loop? So hopefully that all makes sense. Now let's move on to the next line. So now you're going to start to see some movement on the screen when you input this code right here. So these are your keyframes for your animation. So I'll, I'll quickly walk through this. So we got 0%, 50%, and 100%. So the way it works with these CSS animations, you have to tell it exactly where you want these things to be over a, a percentage. So when you first start out, your shape divider is always going to be right here. This is basically at the point zero, 00, and then everything else, you're going to just animate along this line, and then you can come back. So at 0%, we are at left 0, which is right where my cursor is. So at 50%, which is equivalent to the 5 seconds right here, we are pulling that shape divider left negative 50%. So let me just manipulate this code so you can see. So you could go negative 50, and so that would actually make it look like it's pulling more. But then you see right here, if you go too far, you're going to see the edge of these shape dividers. So that's why it's going to take a little bit of tweaking depending on your use case. So you want to make sure you kind of sit through a few times and understand how the animation's working. But in this case, it works good if it's just a 50%. Because remember, your width is at 200% right here. So if you start to pull it back too far, it's just going to start to show. And then at 100%, it just goes back. So it kind of just has this back and forth uh, looping. Now, instead of choosing left right here, you can actually type in the word top and it will s animate up and down. But in this use case, that's not gonna work very well. But just so you know, you're not always stuck to going left. You can go in different directions. So now let's hit update and see how this looks on the front end of the website. So here we are right here on the front end of the website. And there you go. You can see that it's animating exactly the way you would like. So it's pulling back 50% and then sliding right back. Now what I do like about editing the shape dividers in Elementor is you can make edits in real time and it will show up inside the browser. So you don't have to hit refresh or anything like that. So let's say we don't like the zigzag. We can actually go back in here and add, um, I don't know, triangles. And then what you can do here is manipulate how wide it is you can go like that, you can change the height. So you could see right in real time how it's gonna look. So yeah, the possibilities are really endless on how you wanna do this. Um, so if you wanna have uh, two waves, you could do it like this. And then what's cool is you can also flip it. So you have a lot of different options here. So let's see how this looks when you're in different responsive modes. And let's go to tablet so you can kinda see. So it still looks pretty good on tablet. You may want to go in here on tablet and start to change the height of these things and maybe the width if you want, if you want to manipulate how the uh, curve looks. And it looks pretty good. 
Now this is where a lot of times uh, when you go to mobile, this is where a lot of times these shape dividers just, they don't work the greatest honestly on mobile. So I have this code right here that I'm gonna paste in here so you can see that you could just turn the shape dividers off completely on mobile. So let me show you how to do that. If we just go down here and add this uh, media only uh, responsive code, you could see right here, max width at 320 pixels. So if you look up here, this is how wide I have my mobile responsive is at 320 pixels. And then I just say this class display none. So you could see right here, it's not gonna display the shape dividers on mobile. So depending on your use case, you may wanna have it completely off. Um, I, I definitely have noticed that the more shape dividers or animation you have going on on a mobile device, it can slow down the user's phone or, or performance. So you may not wanna add a lot of animations going on on a mobile device. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful and let me know if these animations work for your use cases. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new videos like this. Thanks again. This is Mark from Wiki Design.